Uh, so today, <laughs> today we are on with Zachary Klein. <coughs> Uh, Zachary is a CS student in Hawaii. Where, where, uh, where in Hawaii are you located? I'm in Honolulu, and I attend um, Hawaii Pacific University. Nice. And but you're not you're not originally from Hawaii, if I if I no. I, so I was born in North Carolina, and then during I think elementary, we moved to Pennsylvania, and then for all of high school, we moved to Japan for my dad's job, and I went to a, a private international school. And then um, from there, I went to Hawaii for college. So you're all over the place, which is... Uh, yeah, I did a lot of traveling at a young age, which is uh, awesome to get to see the world. So were you always into programming, or, or how did that sort of come about? Um, I, not really. When I was in high school, um, I, learned, I took two classes on Python, uh, beginner and intermediate. And the teacher didn't really teach the language. He just kind of said, here's projects and didn't really emphasize like what to do with it. So I was really confused and it really turned me off. So I just kind of hid that part of uh, programming. Uh, and then when I got into college, uh, I came in as a business major and my friend said, oh, I'm going to transfer my major to computer science. And I was like, oh, like we have computer science. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, oh. I was like, hey, that sounds better than what I'm doing right now. Uh -huh. So we both we both transferred uh, at the end of our freshman year to computer science. And and that's where it took off. And then that summer, I got into Xcode, and I've never looked back. And I've had been having fun ever since. So that's where it's nice. truly started. Nice, nice. So what, what, what didn't you like about business that, that, that sort of uh, well, pushed you away? I, I don't know. I don't want to hurt any business majors. No, 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 no. I mean, have at it. When I was when I was going in in the classes, it just like it was seemed like a lot of it was a business management major, and it just seemed like they were saying a lot of stuff that I kind of already knew. Uh -huh. That like when you would run a business, you would think of these things. So it didn't seem like anything I didn't already know, and it didn't seem like the skills were ne really necessary. So I just didn't. It just didn't really interest me, and I wasn't. Just that's not where I'm, I know I want to. I, I like being an entrepreneur, and I love management and running certain aspects of a business. Um, but I guess I thought now that I see that, now I see that piece as being more minor than like big deal. But um, yeah, it just, I don't know. I've always been in the computer since I was little, solving my family's like TV problems or iPhone uh, you were, problems. You were, you were that kid in the family, I was that kid. Yeah, yeah, I was always that kid in the family, but I never did anything. I never went past it, like building my own stuff, like coding, like uh -huh. just fix problems and I was into computers and software but I never actually built anything um, or knew any code and I, I just it was a part that I never really thought to bring out until college so right. right is that so 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 what what attracted you to to like programming in, in, in particular I mean there well, it started it's so uh, the summer it, after I go ahead no 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 I, I didn't mean to cut you off yet go okay so after my um Freshman year, after I changed my major, that summer, uh, I was back in Pennsylvania visiting my parents, and I was like, oh, like, I really want to be an entrepreneur. I want to make my own stuff, but I was like, it seems like I'm doing more talk than doing, so I was like, oh, so it's like, I should actually try to do something about this, so I was like, oh, what do I like, and my family was really big in Apple products at the time, so mm -hmm. I was like, oh, like, how do they make these apps? How do they build this kind of stuff? Uh -huh. So I just did research, and then I eventually came across Xcode. And then mm. part of Xcode is Objective-C and Swift. So I right. started with Swift. And I got into it, and I was like, oh, like, this is coding. This is stuff I did back in high school that I didn't like. And I was like, oh, this is kind of cool because I can actually, like, build something towards it. Yeah. And, um, and I, I just mean, studied it's, for – It's God. it's it's more it, – it can be fun, especially when you're getting into it, when when there's a visual aspect to, yeah, to it. Definitely. I mean, with, with Python – there are some things that you can visualize, but it's yeah. much less than like, here's a view controller and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, actually being able to interact. Uh, yeah, see the UI and stuff. Right, yeah. right. Um, awesome. Well, I, I, I do have to congratulate you. Most, you said you were, you, you seemed more, like you were doing more talking than, than doing and. Yeah, uh, I, yeah it, it, just, it's, right it, it was like, it was like, I always tell people, I always want to do something on my own. I always want to do it. 
And then I just never did anything about it. And I just sat there one day and I was like, you know what? Like, I'm getting tired of all this talk. Like, I yeah. need to do something. I need to actually start building. And then that's when I just started, went crazy with Xcode. That's, that's really awesome. I think most, most people you will find uh, stay in the talk, talk, talk. Yeah, and, yeah uh, definitely. I mean, diving full on into something that you don't know, especially something like Xcode that can be quite intimidating. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, screen. yeah. When I first opened it and I saw all these panels, right. the main storyboard and the view controller files, it was quite, uh, it was quite intimidating. Right. But I mean, all the, the instrumentation tools and all the, like, the various settings, like all the millions of projects, I mean, not millions, thousands of projects yeah. settings you can, you can have on there and then, I mean, you you got to learn Xcode and then you got to learn, you know, Swift, which mm -hmm. is evolving and changing. And, and yeah, then you have to learn like the iOS platform. I mean, there's a whole array of things that, that you have to learn. Uh, and it was tough at the beginning because my coding skills were pretty subpar. Mm -hmm. So I had to kind of start from scratch and build up. But um, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Cool. So that's. That's that's really interesting. And then you you ended up sort of, I mean, you were already in Hawaii when that when that was when that was happening. Um, yeah. Can you talk a, maybe a little bit about about your classes and? Uh... Yes. Um, so. So I enjoy all my classes. I like all my professors. I never had any problems with any of my professors. I really enjoy um, um, attending uh, Hawaii Pacific University. I think it's an awesome college. Um, so classes I enjoyed, uh, I did, I did, I was interested in the assembly. I was mm -hmm. interested in that. That was kind of interesting to kind of see the lower level. Um, right. I, I, I've never ended up using any of that, but it's super, it like, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see really, that different perspective uh -huh. of uh -huh. when I first started doing it, I was kind of like, uh, like you kind of have to grasp the early concepts of it. And then once you grab those, it's just kind of like learning another language, except at a lower level and just learning the basics and then going, going up. Um, I enjoyed that. Um, the databases, um, I'm in that now, which is awesome. We're learning uh, SQL, MySQL, NoSQL, MongoDB. Mm. Uh, so we're learning a range of stuff. Um, that's really cool. I, we just started MongoDB. I think that's really, that's quite neat. Yeah, um, I, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually glad you guys are, are, are learning that. You know, when I took my database classes, we, it was mostly SQL. Uh, yeah, makes awesome. sense. Uh, but I... Honestly, in practice, I've used SQL maybe once, and it's wow. the rest has been really like denormalized NoSQL databases. Um, yeah, if you if you look at it, at some of the the professional interviews that we've done, um, the a lot of the focus is actually around Mongo. Um, mm -hmm. And people using people using Mongo for for various things. So it's. Oh, I didn't know how big Mongo was, but. Yeah, it's surprisingly big. It's pretty big. It's very widely used. Awesome, I, I like it. I like we were doing the MongoDB Compass, that uh, software, and the uh, um, it was really cool how they had it set up with like the JSON and stuff, and then like if you had a latitude and longitude document, they had a little map next to it where it show you the pins on an actual map. Uh -huh. Like right next to the actual data, which was really cool. So, so, so for your projects, this was something that 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 I actually didn't use until I I got hit with the real world. Are I'm assuming you guys are using like Git and GitHub? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. See, I do. I was. We were. I, I guess we were so theoretical in my my comp sci education that. Uh -huh. Uh, I I didn't know what Git was until it it, it full on hit me in the face and in the real world. <laughs> yeah, sometimes yeah, some people go through and especially it, it comes really important when you start doing group projects. That's when it's most important, or if you just want to store your own projects. But um, yeah, I I guess I did drop out my junior year, so I never got to my senior sim project. So yeah, one. So maybe they use it there. I could be wrong. Yeah. Maybe. It's pretty good once you get into it, especially if you make a mistake later and you have to go back and grab the old version. It oh, does come yeah. Around. I mean, just, just having those, those checkpoints and those, those safety net, nets are, yeah. are, are vital and super important. Um, so, so we talked a little bit about databases and... Uh, I took a bunch of Java classes, too. A bunch of Java. Um, 
That's what they so teach a lot, of, a lot of object oriented stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, do you, how do you how do you feel about Java? It's fine. I mean, it's kind of older. I mean, there's still like there's newer improvements of it, but like it's it's fine. Like 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 saying Swift when you create a variable, you go like var name, and then you say what it what it equals, and it just determines the data type. In right, Java, it's right, like right. an int string. Uh, it's like it's like shouldn't you tell? Shouldn't you already know this when I'm typing right. it? Yeah, and it's Swift, just a different. It's fine. Swift. Like it's not, I I like it. I mean, I don't. I wouldn't per se do it in my free time. But if I had to do it for right. a project or something, I'd be fine with it. It's not that big of a deal. Right, right. Swift actually actually takes that to the whole another level where it like like if you just say x equals five, it just assumes it's an it's an integer. Yeah. Whereas uh -huh. if you say you know x equals five point zero, it will then Obviously, that's not an integer anymore. It's a double or a float, and we'll, yep. it will adjust accordingly. Um, nice. Which is just super, yeah, super nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you guys doing any, like, Kotlin stuff to complement that Java or, or Scala stuff to complement that Java? Uh, or do they, no, do they even no. mention that those exist? Yeah, yeah, I don't, we, I don't. I haven't heard of those until you just spoke of them. Um, but we've done little things, like we've done some gooby stuff with Java. Uh -huh. um, we done little projects like testing, like maybe like algorithms, like merge sort or something like that, stuff like that. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, well, I mean, obviously you're into you're into mobile dev, so I mean, yeah. all of Androids is all written with Java. Java. Yeah. Um, cool. So, it, so any other classes you want to to highlight or, um, or talk about? Anything that you I had some fun in. Uh, <clears throat> I had fun in calculus. Calculus one and two was fun. I did calculus in high school, but mm. I guess you need a certain uh, AP score. Like you need a four or five, and I had a three, which is like like it's good, but I guess it wasn't good enough. So they made me take calculus over again, which was fine. But calculus one and two was fun. Um, um, but yeah, that's the basics. And then yeah, because I'm still I'm still taking. I'm technically starting, I'm technically finished my CS degree in three years. Uh -huh. So I'm kind of like a little behind because I started later. Right. But I should, but, I, but I'll finish um, next year. Uh -huh. but, um, so, so you're yeah. cramming more, you're, you cramming more stuff in. Yeah, I'm taking like six a semester. I'm, I'm, I'm rushing. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it gets rough at times, but it's okay. I just, just kind of be good at time management. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Let's talk about some of your, your past projects. Maybe we can start with um, uh, anything that you've worked on in class, and then, and then I know you've done some, some more independent type stuff. Uh, so I started with independent stuff technically before uh -huh. school projects. Uh -huh. So I guess I'll start with Aloha Surfer. That was the first, <laughs> that was the first real project, like, like a personal project before any school project. Because this is when I was taking like a low, low level um, coding class, low level as in like beginner, not like low level programming language. Right, right. Not like um, C or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was doing this during that. Um, this is when I was learning um, Xcode. And then once I learned enough watching those Udemy courses, I was like, once I was confident in my skills, then I moved on to my project because mm -hmm. it's more fun doing your project than sitting there watching courses. You have to learn first just to know what you're doing. Right. And then we need to move on. So I started with Aloha Surfer and that was, uh, I think two years ago, learned a lot since two years, but, um, over two years. But, um, so the goal of that was to provide people with the Hawaiian experience because not a lot of people get to visit Hawaii or yet get to live here. So the app kind of um, builds off that, like the lays, the surfers are holding shakas. Uh, the local music was done by one of my friends on a ukulele. Um, stuff like that. It's really cool. I think it's really authentic. Um, um, and that was also a learning experience building that app because I hired a designer, an old friend from high school uh -huh. who went to, who goes to Cal arts, which is a really good art school. And, um, so we went through many drafts building the app. We used to like, I have a folder build with drafts. And so we went through many drafts determining which was which. And then I then once the draft was done, I put it into the game, see how it would look, how it would feel. Cause when the app was first built. Um, the designs were really bad. Um, and when you put stuff at the app store, you know, like they, they expect a certain level of like, yeah, like yeah. High it's, not expectation. Like, it's not like Google play. Like you could, you could yeah. put any sort of trash into Google play. They don't. Yeah, exactly. You could spam somebody on Google play. 
yeah but, yeah but yeah so they have a, actually a certain level and they, i'm pretty sure an actual individual goes over your app through the submission process like uh-huh. there's no like robot or anything uh-huh. and um um so i realized these designs were bad so then that's when i hired her and um the app had app it was laggy app was laggy so because i was still learning at the time and right. i just kept building and building over time and um um there was a lot of road bumps. Some took a couple of days to figure out some errors. Some took weeks. Again, I was newer then, so I was learning, but I was determined to fix it and get it done. And um, I started in like August, like the idea. And then I published it in actually June later with the final product. And we also went through multiple beta phases using um, test flight. Uh, uh-huh. So that was cool. But yeah, um, key features in the app could be like UI kit, sprite kit, in-app purchases, game center, ad mob, stuff like that. Um, there's more in the app um, than you would expect. But um, so yeah, yeah, that was the first one. And that was really fun. Kind of run the gambit there of, of, of uh, various iOS services. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to use a little bit of everything because I want to learn everything in Xcode. And that app was a good, um, um, that was a good starter. And um, I wanted to do so I wanted to relate to it somehow, like how I live in Hawaii. I wanted to relate to that. I wanted to have a reason for building this, not just like just to get my name out there. I wanted to I wanted to do it just so people could actually have use out of it. And and I think I think that experience uh working with a designer is is super valuable. I'm sure you've learned so much oh, yeah. just in terms of, of how to communicate effectively, uh yeah. how uh, how a designer works, like how, how they actually get stuff done as opposed to how mm-hmm. you get stuff done. They have their own various, opinions. You have your own opinions. Right, right. Uh, mm-hmm. The various tools that, that they use. But then like the actual, this is not something that you necessarily think about when, when you're going into like computer science, like application development, but like the actual transfer of like the design to of, like all the design elements, like the colors, the fonts, the, um, whatever images are being used, the mm-hmm. actual transfer of those to the programmer yeah, in a way that is usable is not as straightforward as one might. Yeah, might sometimes, sometimes it looks good, and then when you apply it to the actual application, something might look funky. Right. So, yeah, it's kind of interesting how they apply, but yeah. And then I, I think one of the other things that people don't necessarily realize is there are, like, sure, a lot of apps look different, and, and you know, from a, from – you know, a layperson perspective or someone that doesn't have a lot of experience building applications, you know, they all look different, but under the core, they're using the same, you know, uh, under the hood, they're using the same sort of elements, you know, they're using collection views, they're using table views. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're just combining those in sort of unique ways. Yeah. If you and, go in the apps in the app store, yeah, you can point them out basically. Yeah. Yeah. Using. Once, yeah. Once you see it, you're like, okay, like that's, um, everyone's just using a tab view controller right here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh and everyone just use, uses navigation controllers and but yeah. like from a designer standpoint if you don't know what those are uh and you don't understand the constraints that apple puts on programmers mm-hmm. uh i mean you can design something that looks really cool and might function well but like a programmer is not going to be able to do that yeah effectively or efficiently like they, yeah. they probably could but like if you just designed it to use a navigation controller, it's going to be a lot easier. Yeah. A lot easier for the programmer. Yeah. And it's going to yeah. performance is going to be a lot better because it's the way that, that iOS is like, it's how they want you to do it. <laughs> right. Right. Um, um, cool. So, so let's dive into to maybe some of your other projects. Uh, All right. Where do you, where do you sort of go from there? So after that, I mean, this, after that, during all this, there was little Java projects in class. They were nothing, I wouldn't say they were like on a big scale, but just like minor stuff. We had like labs and stuff like that. Um, but uh, so yeah, Aloha Surfer, that wasn't a school project. That was, that was during my free time. And so right. it was technically the next one, um, Clean Up Hawaii. Well, it's technically called Trash Tags now. I'll explain that, I'll explain that later. Um, so next one was uh, Clean Up Hawaii. We found out there was a thing here in Hawaii called Hack, which is um, Hawaii Annual Coding Challenge. And basically, the government says we have, they give you a topic, and then you have to build an app based on that topic or any sort of software. It doesn't have to be, it could be a web app. Um, and this year was um, um, something about keeping Hawaii green. 
Um, so we built off that. And then one of the categories was open challenges. So it didn't have to be like a part of like plants or stuff like that. So it was open challenge. So we did the open challenge because the other ones were kind of constraining. So we want to do an open challenge and do our own thing. And so I had this idea, I was building this app, um, maybe last August. And I was, I was doing it in my room and I was like, oh, I should build this app with like a social media feed where people can post pictures of trash on the street with the location and people can go clean up. Mm. And it just sat, it just collected dust for a couple months in my computer. Mm. And then hack came up and I was like, oh no, I have this idea that's already like built uh -huh. on my computer. And I was like, holy crap, we can connect these. Uh -huh. It was really cool because it was like it was meant to be. Yeah. And um, so I, I brought that back up um, and we basically built off that. and. Um, so obviously, how many times people have asked us, um, well, why don't you clean up? I must have heard that a thousand <laughs> times. Like, I know it. That was, that was the first thing that popped in my yeah, head. Yeah, exactly. I've heard it a thousand times. So there's many reasons why, um, first of all, many people, there's many reasons for that. One, most people don't clean up because they just simply don't want to. Uh, the next one is they might not have the correct materials. Like, if you see yeah. a mattress laying on the side of the road, you can't just pick that up. Right. So that's kind of difficult. And, like, and say you're, like, on your way to work. You can't just like stop and pick up this stinky trash on the way to work because then uh -huh. you're gonna smell like it and then you don't want to touch it. It's a whole uh -huh. thing. The uh -huh. reality is nobody wants to pick it up. But right. there are um various cleaning groups, especially in Hawaii, that do that kind of thing. And they right. actually have meetings where they determine where to pick up this trash. And instead of like having these meetings, just look at the feed and people can just post on it. That's, and it yeah. can be a simpler process. Uh -huh. So um that's what it, it, it takes a little bit to explain it in the beginning. Yeah, obviously the first question is, why don't you clean up? That's the first. Um, surprisingly, nobody at um, uh, Hack, the actual, when we presented it, surprisingly no one asked that. Because um, they, they did people, it, they know. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but many people along the way did. Um, so, and, and like in, or you just clean groups can look at the feet or various good Samaritans. I'm in Hawaii, especially, there's a lot of good Samaritans. Like there's a page called Stolen Stuff Hawaii on Facebook that has over a hundred thousand likes, and people post their stolen stuff, and people actually look out for that kind of stuff, and they help them find it, and it's a big like community thing. Like my like my sister's car got stolen, for example, and we actually found her car. You someone found her car using Stolen Stuff Hawaii, so that just the, that that idea of Good Samaritan was like, oh, people might actually use this. Um, so yeah, uh, we built it for two, it took two months to build it. Um, it was two coders, me, and uh, I had a friend do the back end, and basically I did everything else. Um, because I wasn't, I wasn't taking that database class then, I wasn't familiar with that stuff, and he was just taking it, so he was like, I can do all that. So he uh -huh. did all that. Um, and I just did the other work, like front end, submission, basically all the other app stuff. Um, uh, and then yeah, so once we were done, present to the people in the Hawaii state government, especially the governor, he was there too. That was kind of cool. Um, so I presented it. Um, did, we didn't, did you have to explain the whole like, human nature side of that to them? Huh? Did you have to explain the whole human nature side of that to them? Like nobody actually wants to pick any of this stuff up. And Yeah, well, I, 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 I try to explain to them. The, uh, the only question we got was like, I don't, I'm trying to remember. Only one guy asked us a question, one of the judges. I think he was worried about, because we were like, oh, we can make a, sponsorship like you could pay someone to pick up your trash hmm. we, we thought about that too and he was interested in that but um uh that was the only question we got they didn't really hit nitpick on that um so that was cool we built that for two months um and then once hack was over we didn't win we got like six or seven plays hmm. um it seems like the people that won every year was something that benefited one of the colleges yeah so that could just be me Shocker. nitpicking Shocking. Yeah, it could just be me nitpicking, but uh, there's there's been a there's been a correlation over the past couple of years in the competition. No, so, no. Um, and we were also very last. We built the, an app that donates your college money. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we were we were really end. They put us at the end of the uh, uh, presentation list, and when we presented, it was kind of obvious that they made up their mind. Uh -huh. So. But it was okay. I was I went up there. I was doing that Billy May speech. I was like, "We have a product for you." <laughs> and it was really. I, we had fun. That was that was that was what we. That was the, our idea. They were like, "You should do like Billy Mays." So I went up and I was like, "Do you hate trash?" It was really. It was funny. Um, but good. yeah, well, I so, think it's, I now, once you explain the whole like yeah, you have to hear it a little bit. Yeah, it's it's actually pretty good, especially with the uh, the cleanup crews. You know, I. 
I think we talked about, I'm in, I'm in the, I'm in Costa Rica right now. And, and there are the, like, a, there's organized efforts to clean up beaches yeah. and, and, and pick up the trash because they don't want to see these environments, these really yeah, fragile people really help, especially in places like this that are just like, I don't know, just gorgeous. Like, right. why would you want them to be trash anywhere? Right. Yeah. At all the places, this, like, these are just, they're so nice. Like, you shouldn't have to see that kind of stuff. Right, right. But, um, but, um, so yeah, I started out as clean up Hawaii. And then one day, my friend tagged me on something on Facebook and said, there's this big trend going on called hashtag trash tags, where people will take a picture of trash on social media, then they post a picture after of them cleaning it up and they go hashtag trash tag. And apparently, it was a big trend. And I contacted my friend who did the back end and I was like, we should rebrand this right now and try to right. catch the peak of this trend. Right. I, my friend tagged me and was like, don't you have an app for this? And I was like, holy crap. So we spent all night rebranding it. So now it's called trash tag and we changed all the wording and stuff. Um, but um, so yeah, if you see clean up Hawaii and trash tag, that's why. Uh -huh. um, obviously not everything is transferred over, but the stuff on the app store is transferred over. We changed it's the logo cool. and everything. So how's, how's it going? How's it doing? It's doing fine. It didn't catch on like we expected. I mean, it's, like we expected to. it's it's super localized, so it's not like that's not gonna uh, catch on in like New York City. <laughs> well, well, the thing is, it started as that, but when we made it trash tags, our sorting system to sort through the feeds, we made one for each state. Uh huh. We put each, like in each state, we put the major city, so you can sort from state to city, all across the U.S., um, which is cool. But I mean. If it, 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 it seems like it's really hard to get your app idea, especially if you're not a branded company. Uh -huh. Like most people don't download apps just from a random person's name. But it's, um, this is why I was I was looking through the code that you shared me on that one, and I was I mean the project is called Clean Up Hawaii, and then I I looked yeah. through the cities files, and there's like Alabama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> okay. That that we, we didn't change sense. everything in the actual project because nobody really sees that. Right. Right. Um, but, um, yeah, I was you know, like, I why, got, is, why is Birmingham yeah. in here? Uh, yeah, there's, a whole, there's a whole list of name changes, right? But, um, that but makes yeah, so more the, sense. Yeah, the cool features in that maybe map kit, UI kit, collection table views, Firebase mm -hmm. login. We do use um, um, Google Firebase uh, frameworks and within the application to log in um, for the authentication, just solely for security reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and then also like core location stuff like that. When you add the post, it pulls your location and then add that to the um, post, which is cool. But um, nice. yeah, so that's that's uh, that's trash tags in a, in a nutshell. But we, yeah, so we we took two months to build it for hack, and then another two months after that to perfect it for the app store and make put it through testing and make sure everything worked well. And then we submitted and then yeah. And I I mean I think that that whole experience of just I mean there's the whole, once again, there's the whole technical side of like writing the code and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Then once you have it and it's like, you know, it works on the simulator or, or it's on your phone locally or whatever. I mean, what do you do then? What's, what's sort of the process? I mean, test flight and then, mm -hmm. and then dealing with iTunes connect and all of that stuff. I mean, that's a whole nother like area to learn that that is yeah. like super valuable that you don't necessarily think about in, in, or that they don't even touch on in, in any sort of computer science classes. Especially, like yeah, especially the iTunes Connect stuff. And when you put your, like, information on the App Store, like your promotional text or your subtitle, stuff like that, like, uh -huh. when you submit, like, if it doesn't relate to your app that well, like, the description you gave and what the actual app does, they'll just deny you. Right. So the stuff actually has to be solid and, like, there can't be, like, grammatical right. errors. It has to, like, be correlated. Right. So it's quite picky especially with like the, the entrepreneur type stuff that, that you, that you've done and, and like the independent projects, like all that administrative stuff. I mean, learning that, uh, if you don't know how to do that, it can just be a headache. Yeah. A real headache. It's, it's fun. Um, it, it's cool making the, that kind of stuff in iTunes connect. Cause it's like, it takes like a couple of days to get the finalized, like promotional text to just uh -huh. make sure it's like spot on and it kind of attracts them. Cause that's what they see when they go on the app store. Right. So, that could be that could be the determining factor if they download your app or not. So you have to so, have that. Yeah. Oh, go, sorry, I didn't mean that. Say, yeah, that, you have to have that appealing factor. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Um. Cool. So have you worked on anything uh, since then, uh, or, so, or have anything yeah. in the works? Um, I'm doing a project. It's not really 
important, but I'm doing like some microprocessor simulation in computer organization. We're basically um, creating a processor through Java code, like simulating one, like how it would work in an actual computer just based on the code. But that's cool. But the main one thing I want to talk about is beer budget. This right. is this is the next app project I've been working on for a couple months now, which is turning in. It's going really well, and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. And it's kind of cool because building this, um, I'm allowed to. I, it's like a personal thing I want to do, and I'm allowed to do it for my school projects. So mm -hmm. the app is technically related to three other classes. It's the project for my HCI class, Human Computer Interaction, so the uh -huh. UI and stuff. Um, the database class because I'm storing database um, information on the bars and the beers and the social media aspect. Uh -huh. And uh, the mobile applications class, where basically you just have to build an app. And the teacher knows I, I build apps, so he, his bar is like sky high. Oh yeah. So, yeah. So so which is fine. It's I'm, I'm I've been doing it like months in advance. So um, but yeah, so it's kind of cool, and I can do that during my free time and in class. Right. And um, it's awesome. It's exactly what I want to do. Right. And it's really cool that they um allow us to do that. Um. So, but yeah. So I'm working on that. Um, so tell me about beer budget. So beer budget, um, so basically, there's, I'm still working on it. Um, we're taking user feedback. We're doing some testing early on for the classes. Um, so basically, you provide us with your um, customized budget. So say price per beer. So say you only want to spend, let's say, a dollar to eight, eight dollars on a single beer. So based on that, we'll show you places around you that fit that price range, like the price per beer. And we'll have little pins on it, and we'll have our little logo on a Google map, and I'll show you like where our information is available, and I'll show you. You click on the pin, I'll show the restaurant name and the various uh, prices below it that fit your budget. And if you click on that actual um, description, it gives you the full menu. It expands to show you the full menu, and it only shows you the stuff that's in your budget. Uh -huh. So if like if you don't only want to spend one to eight bucks, and you're going out, and you click on that, and the place you want to go to doesn't even have any of that information that's in your in your budget, it's like, oh, I don't need to go there. Like, you right. have a place only that you want to spend the money on. Right. It's cool. Right. Or we'll give an option where you can click, oh, show us all bars and information. We can do that too. And right. also, well, the cool aspect of it is, since you get to pick, uh, pick a particular price range, you could also technically make it a high price range. Like, mm -hmm. like the 20. if you really wanted to, if you're like a beer yeah. connoisseur and you only want yeah, to spend, yeah. like I didn't even, stuff. I didn't even think of that. In that yeah, yeah, exactly. If you really, really wanted idea. to, I mean, that's not the point of the app, but you technically could if you wanted to, and that's not right, a problem. right, right. So it's kind of cool. It could do, it could be used for anybody. Right. And, if you're um, going on a, you know, you're going on a date and you want to, you want to, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to show them what's up. Let's, bring, let's not go drink all this this Bud Light. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> go drink that expensive stuff. Right, so right, that, right. That's cool. And it's also going to have a social media feature where you basically create an account and you can just post this one single feed, call it the beer feed, where everybody can post about their experiences, like what they're at, what they're drinking, stuff like that. I'm still oh. working on that. Um, but the beer, the, um, uh, the Google Maps and the icons and stuff is actually built really well. That's working right now. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, that's the main aspect of it. And it's kind of cool. The Google Maps has its own custom color. It's like a dark bluish. Um, um, so Google Maps is obviously built into the app, so you should be able right. to do everything from the app, so you don't have to go okay. outside. But um, yeah, that's really cool. I'm having fun doing that. Are Are you partnering with with any bars in any way? Not are currently. You? I'm currently doing everything on my own. I mean, technically. Um, I mean, it seems like it seems like a natural progression of like, like if, if you're looking for a way to monetize or, or turn this into a real yeah. like a real well i would eventually if we get obviously if we get enough users um bars yeah. will start turning their heads and right be like oh what's this obviously when we get to that point if i go right now i've tried t contacting bars and most of them don't even care to answer you yeah so which is fine I mean, you got um, you gotta you gotta get them to pay attention to yeah exactly yeah. i'll do that i'll, 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 I'll i'm patient i can wait yeah and uh, the cool part is when i'm building this database a lot of bars don't have their beer information online, only their food stuff, their food yeah. prices. Um, so it's kind of cool because I'm building this database with all their prices and stuff, and this could get really big. Like I, I try to do at least one bar and a beer and their beer prices every day. I try to do at least one in my free time. Yeah, so it's gonna, to I was going to ask you, how are you, how are you actually seeding the data in there? Because so like some, some, places some places are online. Some places are online. Like Some actually do have their alcohol prices online. Most uh -huh. don't. Some do though, so if they're online, I'll just grab them from there. Um, but most of it's yeah, it's just either like it's just going in and getting them, and I'll build a feature in the app that says, "Hey, are we not in your area? Send us your beer prices." Uh -huh. And I'll give them a UI so they can do it quickly. 
So right now it's all it's all manual input yeah. on, on your end. Yeah, it's kind of a pain. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for I'm, an easier way to come about it. I'm going to build um, a, an admin app for the app uh, that's on my phone so I can um, um, put in the beer information quickly based on the little um, UI components and do it faster. So are yeah. you are you storing those those prices? Where are those being seeded actually into the app? Are they in like a, are they in like a Firebase sort of thing where they can be pulled in dynamically or, or no, are they I'm storing them in um uh, MySQL database stored with Bluehost? Okay, but they're they're yeah. stored on like a web server somewhere, not yes. uh, yeah. okay, not not like hard coded into the app where you have to like yeah yeah no 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 no, no. okay okay. I'm not Hard coded? No, no, no. Yeah, this is that. Uh, that's all. The app's totally synchronized with the database. Okay. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. It's the app and that database are synchronized. There's yeah. There's no hard coding. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any any partners on this, or is that or is that all solo? It's just me right now. I mean, I have projects. I mean, there's people in my groups, but they don't know Xcode, so I just kind of uh -huh. do it all, which is fine because I I enjoy I enjoy what I do. Yeah. So um, but yeah, it's basically all me. There's. Nobody else has touched the code or X code or anything. I'm the only one that's touched it. That's that's. I think that's that's really really great idea and a really creative idea. I think it's I think it's cool. I think it's, it's neat. Such a college. <laughs> I, I know. I, I know. It's and we're gonna we're gonna aim towards college student or even just yeah. tourists like Honolulu because like being here is already expensive. Oh, like, uh, yeah. To a certain I mean, price range. Um, and it's cool building it because as like in the beginning, I was like, oh, this is all right. But the more I'm building it, the more I'm looking at it just to look at prices. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of, this is working. Yeah. Hey, you got to scratch your own itch. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I like, I really like building things that interest me. If they interest me, then it's like hundred percent, like don't stop. And I, 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 do, I have to compliment you on, um, on just being beer focused for the time being, uh, you know, cause there are sort of analogous apps to food in general. Uh, mm. like every, they want every restaurant. Mm. Um, but there's a, there's a saying, um, uh, the riches are in the niches. And <laughs> if, if you can really speak to a particular user and a particular problem that they have, uh, you're much more likely to get them to use your thing than like a generic like deals app. So like yeah. if, if you're able to speak to like a college student that wants to go and have some beers with, with his or her friends, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to use beer budget much more likely. They're much more likely to use beer budget than, than some just generic sort of yeah. here's the price. I've talked here's to a couple um, college individuals and they were interested and the cool part is the Apple also involved like grocery stores, like cases of beer. So uh -huh. like you can see the beer, you see the type. So lager, ale, uh, IPA, stout, stuff uh -huh. like that. You see the type, the name, the price, and the size. So like pint, half pint, case, pitcher, jumbo pitcher, stuff like that. I think like it's that. a great idea. I think it's a great idea. I think, I, yeah, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. Uh -huh. But I, I, I'm, 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 I'm predicting like a August release date maybe. Yeah. Because this is going to be my big thing over the summer. Um, that's that's really awesome. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for this semester to end, so I could just go like crazy um, with beer budget. Yeah, that's that's really cool. That sounds like a really really cool project <laughs> and yeah, really creative and uh, awesome. So so um, I don't want to take up too much of your your time here. Um, maybe we can we can sort of close out with with maybe seeing. Uh, where you maybe what what maybe your plans are for the future if you know them. Um, obviously, you're going to keep working on beer budget. That's going to. I can. I um, um. I can also show you some if you have time. I can show you some of the code just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. We can. We can. If you want to do that, if you have time, that don't. That's okay. Remember. Just for the sake of showing how it's organized. Yeah, that would be awesome. How do you screen? Am I supposed to screen share? Yeah, yeah, if you could. You see that little green? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, here we go. All right, you got it? Got it. All right. So this is kind of cool. This is where the database information is stored. So this struct is a custom data type where basically um, it helps store the data that comes in using these reference keys. 
So basically, when you load the, the when you use the PHP file that brings the data from the database, so the database goes to the PHP file, which goes yeah. to the app, right? So the PHP file returns a, a JSON collection. And if you know anything about JSON, they have these, um, what is it? It's like a value and key, I think that's what they call it. Right. And um, so, and then this is how they link up right here. Right. Using, and this is cool. And then um, and you, and I basically have an object where I can manipulate it. Using the Swift codable protocols that are, I mean, they're not new anymore, but they're. Yeah. Uh, well, this, this syncs really well. Um, I like this. Um, just to, before I go a little more into this, just to describe the basic outline. So basically, yeah, the database files, the class files, the objects, um, social media, similar. Uh, this, is the, this is the custom Google map colors that I have. Um, basically, this is also JSON. Um, so that's how you do that. Collection view, internet connection, to see if there's an internet connection. If there's not, tell them. Um, and basically, all the VC files, the view controller files, which are scattered in here. Um, I hope one day, um, I, will pro I might reorganize this one day into a simpler, because these view controller files, as you know, probably get really big. Right. And they get beefy, which is kind of frustrating. Yeah, MVC um, uh, model view controller, but it also stands for massive view controller. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, but um, so yeah, that's just the basic setup, and then obviously your main storyboard, and then stuff like that. So what what Cocoa all... Pods are you using in there? So, um, which ones? Which which Cocoa Pods are you using in there? So I'm using uh, Firebase authentication for the mm -hmm. social media login. So you don't have to log into the social media until you go to the social media. Because I don't want to stop uh, you at a login before you even get to the map. Yeah, you don't want to create that friction. Yeah, exactly. People would not like that. Let's try to learn from Cleanup Hawaii. As soon as they see a login, they get they get a little iffy. If 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 your app apps only put a login in if your app absolutely needs it. If it can yeah. function without, let it function without. People. Yes, but, yeah, people. I guess apparently don't like that. No, no. That's another <laughs> password they have to remember. It's another yeah. account. They have, they have hundreds of accounts at this point. Like your thing, it's no offense. It's just your thing probably isn't important enough to them to like, this is just not beer budgeting. This is in general. Yeah. Especially what if you're small, they're like, I don't know who these people are giving them my information. Right, right, right. They don't but, need my But email. either way, it is, it is stored securely because of uh, the Firebase stuff. Just, I would store it in my own database, but... Uh, that, that would uh, probably cause trouble. Yeah, it would. Yeah, so Firebase authentication, um, Google Maps, uh, Google Places. Places is cool, so when you add a post to the feed, you can click on the little pin, like on Twitter, and it shows you the list of places around you, and you can add to your post. So I get that list of places from the Google Places. Um, and then also there's one called Material Design, which gives me these fancy text fields. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I think that's Google too. I think. Yeah, it's Google. Yeah. Um, yeah, Google is everywhere. Shocker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not surprising. Um, but yeah, that, I think those are the ma main ones. I might, I don't think I'm missing any, but those are the main ones. Um, which is cool. That helps a lot with a lot of stuff. Um, because the especially the authentication, like you don't have to start paying until you reach like a large amount of users. Right. So it's not, and, and I don't think you don't have to pay for Google Maps either. You can have unlimited um shows of the map, and then Google Places you have to pay. At some point, I'm not quite sure what it is. But, Firebase um, is also Google. I'm sure you're aware of that. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Same, yeah. AdMob and all that. They bought AdMob. AdMob used to. Be, I think AdMob was made by college students, and then Google, and then they called it AdMob, and then Google bought them, and now it's like a Google thing, which is kind of cool. That's a that's a whoever made AdMob. That was a smart idea. Um, but yeah, okay. So it was kind of cool. The uh, the setup of this. How the um how it's receiving the database and where it's putting the database actual information, but oh, it's actually grabbing it uh down here, uh based on I'll just show you this piece so you don't have to see my full UR link, um URL link um but this is kind of cool this is how it grabs the data it basically uses mm -hmm. this URL which returns the data, and um it puts that data in the into the bar struct array based on those um references those kind of mm -hmm. um yeah. And um, basically, then I look through this bar struct array right here, and then I add it to the bar um, um, class, and then I actually create the latitude and longitude right here. I um, parse it into a double value um, because they come in as strings. Right. Um, and then I add that to the array. So then I have my array of, of bars. 
and then I do the same thing for the beer. And then this is kind of interesting. I mean, yeah, the basic concept of the price, it's not that, it's basic, it's basic logic. It's not that hard. So basically they're, um, I, when they select their budget, I save that double value using user defaults. And then, and then I just calculate, oh, I look at the, once each beer comes in and then I put the price into a double value. And then I say basically the basic logic, if it's um, greater than or equal to their minimum or less than or equal to their maximum, add it to the array. It's, it's basic logic. It's not that difficult, yeah. Yeah. but it's kind of cool how this, this little piece does all that for you. Right. And uh, you all those, all those bars and stuff. It's, it's kind of cool how it turns out. Um, and then, yeah. And then this is kind of, I have, do have a completion handler on here. I have it down here. So basically this function has to finish before it creates the map. Because I was having problems that the map was loading before the data was there. So right. like it was blank. So basically this completion handler, so basically this, it's waiting for this completion to be true before it runs this. Right. And that's, um, that's kind of cool. Um, this is your basic table view, table view. And then this is how you add the actual um, pins down here. So then, yeah, you create the map based on the user location that I pull, the current location. Um, so it's kind of cool how you add them. Um, so we created that bar array up there I showed you um, based on the bar class. And you just create the marker, and then I give it the snippet, and it various properties, give it the position based on the bar at latitude, longitude. And then I add the beer, and then I link up the bars to their beers based on the bar ID, which is kind of cool. So if it sees the same bar ID that's on the beer and the bar, then I just add it to the snippet. And then every time there's a new beer, it adds a new line and puts it under it. It's all one snippet, it's one string. Mm -hmm. And then every time there's a new one, it just as you can see, it appends, to, it appends it uh, to the string. And then once that one that beer's done, it just adds a new line and starts the next one. And it yeah. kind of goes through like that instead of creating like a whole another like an unnecessary array. Right, right, right. Yeah, I see yeah. what you're saying there. Yeah, and then um, yeah, and maybe as as your functionality gets more advanced, it might be uh, uh, beneficial to separate those things out so you can like people can click on them and, and maybe manipulate that data in, in some way. Yeah. But, I think like for, for an MVP for like a launch thing, that's, that's like a totally reasonable approach. Yeah. And yeah, I was going to do like, you might be, uh, you'll be able to sort stuff by type, size, price. Eventually I'll get into that, but that's obviously features that will be added later. Right. And you can't really do that with just a giant string. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's like more important things that have to be done before you go to these things. Yeah. You know, tackle, tackle the big stuff, make sure people like it before you're like, Oh, yeah, we're going to sort in this super, advanced niche way like yeah well, if uh, no one uses it in the first place it doesn't really yeah, and then all that for nothing right um so yeah then you just add the snippet to the marker and then you just add it to the google map and then you just give it the icon the image we have um and then that's basically it and that's kind of cool and then yeah then it adds the um when you determine if you click on the icon how you determine the beer menu so it goes to here and it grabs which marker you clicked on I send it to the determine beer menu um, function, and then I determine which one you clicked on based on the bar ID. And I see basically um, if uh, the bar, I look, oh no, sorry, I look at the bar title, and then once I get the bar title you clicked on, links to the looking in the beer uh, bar array, and then once it finds that, then I find the ID that's linked to that bar name, and then I know what you want. And then once I have that bar ID set, and then I just add the menu. Which is kind yeah. of cool. Um, well, but yeah, we're the base. we're we're about to hit an hour here, believe it or not. Uh, all right, do we just jump to the? All right, how do I end this? Stop share. Uh, stop share. Yeah. All right. Do we just don't so, go into the future stuff real quick? Yeah, yeah. Let's 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 touch on that and then and then. All right. Sometimes you get me going and it's like you can go on for days. No, no, no. It's it's all it's all good stuff. But um. All right. Um. So future. Uh. Get, get my CS degree. Um, yeah. That's the goal. Um, as I'm getting more into college, I'm having fun in college. I'm having fun learning. But I'm, it's kind of clear what I like to do. Right. So it's kind of yeah, like. I mean, you, see, you seem to have a solid direction there. I mean, yeah, I keep leaning like, that direction. And then college is trying to pull me this way. Uh, so um, it's fine. Well, it seems like you, you found a nice way to meld the two with, with this. Yeah. I, mean, I really like doing it. Like three class projects as well yeah. as like your own independent entrepreneurial itch. I mean, but I it's think fun. That's, that's it's really fun because awesome. this project, it's like, it's like three birds, one stone. Right. It's like I get to knock them all down with this. And, um, but it's kind of cool. Yeah. After I finished one project, it's just 
on to the next. Just yeah. keep going and going. And the hardest part is the idea. It's the hardest part about everything. Right. I think it's the idea. Like some days just sit for weeks, just like, I know I want to build my next app, but it's like, I don't know what it's going to be. Right. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah that's the hardest. Uh, well, not, I, you know, I got to say, once again, compliment you on, on, on that. Most people are full of ideas and then they never end up doing anything. So. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, you got to be into it. Also, when you think of the idea, like, you got to think, like, are people going to use this? Uh -huh. Like, don't build something that's like, like, you're building on something that doesn't need to be built. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just pointless. But, um, yeah. So, CS degree, beer budget, uh, I'm hoping by August, um, because that's also when college students come back to college. And it's also yeah, my, um, hit him, hit him right on the, yeah, hit him right on the welcome. spot. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah. And, um, yeah, this is, that's also going to be my second year with iOS development. I, that's what LinkedIn told me. So <laughs> that's going to be cool. Um, at least it on my second year. And, um, but basically the end goal of all this, I would love to build an app that gets really big and I can make a business out of it and then run the business. That's what I would yeah. like to do. Yeah. That's like basically like, like Uber or stuff like that. Like that was all started from an app. That's right. like really cool. I would love to do something like that. I would love to run a business because I think I'm, I'm a very social person and I know like what I want and I know, I, right. I know what, what I want it to look like. Dude, and I, I mean, I think, I think, uh, I mean, you keep, you keep really throwing good stuff at the wall here and, and like keep pounding away with these ideas and really trying to make them come to life. And I, I mean, I think you, you're touching on, you touched on that with, with clean up Hawaii and trash tag. And now you're really touching on that with, with beer budgets. And I don't know where your beer budget's going to go, but I think you're definitely moving in the right direction. Yeah. Um, Each app is kind of building thing like skill level for your basic right, spray right. kit. Is right. Clean up Hawaii, but, but you're also building these. your, I mean, you're, you're building your, your portfolio and you're building a, uh, you're also just building your entrepreneurial skills and like all the administrative stuff that, that goes into. To I really, I really like, I like working with people, but I like, as you know, there's people like, like it has to be up to like a certain speed. Like uh -huh. you want to work with somebody that you can, like you're synchronized with that you feel the same way and how they code and stuff. And it's similar. Um, uh -huh. So usually, um, so like a good clean, like a good collaboration was clean up Hawaii. Me and that guy worked really well together. Um, usually I do stuff on my own. It's not because I have to, like this. I only like doing stuff on my own. It's just kind of, that's how it turns out. Um, and I, and I'm fine with doing everything on my own, like the database, the administration, the actual app. Like it's a lot of work. It takes a lot longer by yourself, but I have fun doing it. Um, and one last thing, um, if the company thing doesn't turn out, um, I was development job, I guess. There's plenty of them out there and they're good pay. Um, but I would really like to expand on the entrepreneur. That's, that's sincerely what I yeah. want to do. I mean, 100%. I like that, that a lot seems, more. That seems like what you're just really naturally drawn to. And I, have to, I have yeah, to I love that. like telling people my idea. I just, I get really passionate about my projects and I really hope that I can build that into a future one day. So. Well, that's really awesome. Um, we are, we are pushing an hour here and I, I mean, yeah, I, I, think I, really, about it. I really enjoyed, uh, speaking with you. Um, yes.